Alrighty, day... whatever it is, still stuck in quarantine. Toilet paper supplies are low, although from the looks of my food supply, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Overall, no signs of getting out anytime soon. Oh well, I guess I got plenty of time to catch up on the new episodes of some of my favorite TV shows. Are you sure about that? Seriously though, even though it sucks that shows like The Flash got put on hold because of this virus situation, at the very least it means more people are keeping themselves from getting sick, seriously stay home and wash your hands people, and we the audience get plenty of extra time to rewatch all the insane story beats showrunner Eric Wallace and the writing team put in every episode after the Crisis crossover. Now I'm not saying the first half of the season wasn't crazy, what with all the infected blood people running around Central City and Barry having to fight another big CGI dude, but on the other hand, it's not like the first half had stuff like Gorilla Grodd and Flash fusing together to fight Solovar, new Speed Force powers, the return of both Wally West and Eobard Thawne, or even the actual death of the Speed Force. Yep, that's right, the extra-dimensional energy source for all speedsters in the Arrowverse, that thing that's supposedly been around since the beginning of time. When the first subatomic particle sprang forth from the Big Bang to form reality as you know it, we were there. Actually, literally just died an episode or two ago. Honestly, I know I should be surprised after seeing something like that, but by this point, I think I'm more surprised that Eobard's powers and his personal power source, the negative speed force, are both still apparently thriving after everything that's happened recently. I mean, if Thawne basically stating that the negative speed force was doing fine in the death of the speed force, and him doing his usual vibrating and spooky voice thing in the exorcism of Nash Wells weren't enough of a hint that his powers were doing just fine, we also got a confirmation from Sisko during Nash's exorcism that Thawne managed to tap into his speed force with zero issues as he slowly took over Nash's body. What the hell just happened? Thawne just connected to his speed force. If that happens again... We lose Nash forever. But so what, right? I mean, it's probably just another way for the writers to up the drama over the next few episodes or something. Depower Barry while leaving Thawne at full power, make it look like Thawne's gonna kill everybody for a bit, then Barry gets his power back at the last possible minute, somehow, to save the day. You know, the usual CW kind of drama. No big whoop. The thing is though, this whole situation doesn't really make a whole lot of sense when you really stop and think about it. I mean seriously, why is the negative speed force still doing fine if the positive one, something we've known for a while now that Thawne needs if he wants to keep his powers, was killed off not too long ago? And I know some people are going to watch this video like, But comics, what makes you think the negative speed force needs the positive one to work properly? Shouldn't both of them work fine by themselves? Well, you'd think so, but remember during the Gone Rogue episode last season, when Team Flash mentioned that whole thing about how the negative speed force steals speed from its positive counterpart? I just picked up a frack ton of background particle radiation. Particles? Tachyons? Negative tachyons. Maybe they actually siphon positive tachyons. Stealing speed from the speed force like a parasite? I don't know about you, but that definitely sounds like both it and Thawne need the positive speed force if they want to stay powered up properly, right? And of course, we can't forget that one, you know, little moment in the show's history when Thawne got stranded in the past after he killed Nora Allen and future Barry left him behind. Back in the day, when the show made it sound like he was only using the regular speed force to get from place to place, then yeah, getting stuck like that kind of made sense. Now that we know he had access to the negative speed force the whole time though, Thawne just seems like a stupid dickhead hanging around in the past for no reason. Seriously, seems like he should have been fine getting back to the future if his speed force really was independent of the regular one, right? Either way you look at it, it seems like the negative speed force really shouldn't work without at least some input from the positive speed force, so if that one's really truly dead, then what's going on here? Well, right off the bat, I can't be the only one wondering whether or not Thawne's just lying about how the negative speed force is doing, am I? I mean, for all we know, the negative speed force is going through the same energy depletion thing the positive one's going through right now, and Thawne's just lying about it to try and push Barry towards making his own speed force, just to make sure he still gets to keep his powers in the end. Wouldn't exactly be the first time he twisted things around to suit his own ends, like when he manipulated Nora throughout Season 5 just to get himself out of prison, and it'd be a fun throwback to Thawne's endgame in the first season, making sure Barry has his powers just so he can get something out of it. Plus, Thawne really lays that whole made his own speed force thing on thick, doesn't he? That's what you get, Barry, for trusting such a puny and pathetic force. That's why I built my own. Definitely seems like he's trying to get Barry to start thinking about making his own speed force, right? Having said that though, I don't think the negative speed force has any issues at the moment. 
For one thing, Thawne was giving off some serious juice, both while he was taking over and getting kicked out of Nash. I don't understand. I've got the PTDs on full blast. Thawne's negative tachyon should be destabilizing, but the neuron data isn't showing any resistance. If anything, his energy's intensifying. I mean, you'd think Cisco, who was monitoring Thawne through Nash the entire time they were in the speed lab, would have mentioned something like, oh, he and Barry have a weakened similar energy structure, or oh, they're both losing speed force energy, or, you know, something like that, I don't know. Maybe Cecile could have picked up on a bit of nervousness from Eobard about potentially losing his speed or something like that. I don't know, who knows. Either way, point is, I feel like somebody definitely would have noticed if Eobard really was in danger of losing his speed like Barry is right now. Plus, all that's ignoring the fact that we saw Thawne immediately jump back into doing the whole vibrating and spooky voice thing the more he got control of Nash's body. And since we know Thawne isn't an idiot, unlike some people on the show not naming names, then I'm pretty sure there's something else going on here. So, okay, if Thawne's telling the truth and there really isn't anything wrong with the negative speed force, then what the hell's going on? Are we just dealing with some bad writing or what? I mean, come on, we already know these two forces are linked. One powers the other, that whole thing. So if the negative speed force runs out of its power source, you'd think it'd shut down at some point, right? Well, that's the thing. I know we heard that whole siphoning speed theory from Cisco back in Season 5, but it's important to remember that nobody ever actually said the negative speed force is only powered by the positive version. Based on everything we've seen about both the negative speed force and its positive counterpart, then I think it seems obvious that the Arrowverse version of the negative speed force actually works more like how it works in the comics, where it still eats away at the regular speed force, but instead of using it as its only power source, the negative version's actually powered by something else. Or should I say, someone else. If you remember 2009's Flash Rebirth number 4, great series by the way, good quarantine read if you haven't checked it out already, then you should remember this awesome fight scene in the Negative Speed Force, with Eobard casually stomping both Barry and fellow speedster Max Mercury. While he's busy whooping ass like nobody's business, Eobard mentions that he created the Negative Speed Force as part of a plan to fuck with the other speedsters, something that could contaminate them with his messed up energy, sound familiar? While also poisoning the regular Speed Force in the process. At the same time, you'll also notice that Thawne mentioned he powers the negative speed force every time he runs around, similar to how Barry himself powers the positive speed force during his runs. Honestly, it makes way more sense to have the Arrowverse version of the negative speed force work like its comic book counterpart, mostly because it means Thawne's speed force has an external power source, you know, like himself. This way, Thawne can run and run as much as he pleases, and if he happens to suck up some positive speed force energy in the process, it's a bonus. Besides, we know major changes to Arrow vs. Barry's relationship with the positive speed force are definitely coming by the end of the season. I mean, sure, maybe he didn't really create or power the original positive speed force like Comic Barry does, but since Arrow vs. Barry's going to create a new one this season, then I think it's safe to say he'll end up being a power source whenever his speed force gets off the ground. And if it can happen for one speed force, then why couldn't another speedster be a power source for a second speed force they created? Having said that though, I know some of you guys are probably going to be like, but comics, what about Thawne getting stranded back in 2000? If his speed force doesn't need barriers to work right, and if it's immune to timeline changes, then why did he get stuck in the past? And that's a fair question, but it's also one with a pretty easy answer. In fact, I think I mentioned it in a few videos in the past too. Either way though, Thawne got stuck like a dumbass because he screwed up the time stream. I mean, think about his plan for a minute. Finally, I knew how to defeat you once and for all. Travel back in time, kill you as a child wipe you from the face of the earth. So according to Thawne's own words, he wants to go back in time and kill Barry, slash do something tragic and horrible to Barry, then just mosey on back home like nothing happened. See the terrible logic in that plan? Doing something ultra shitty to young Barry means no flash for Eobard to fight in the future. And since we know the only reason Eobard has his powers in the first place is because of the flash, I was obsessed with you. For so long I wanted to be the flash. I spent years figuring out how you came to be, duplicated the reaction, and it worked. <laughs> I became like you. Then no flash also means no inspiration for Eobard to get speedster powers or make his negative speed force, essentially leaving him powerless. Yeah, remember that thing I mentioned earlier about Eobard not being a stupid asshole? Strike that. Reverse it. Seriously though, you get the point. As for the negative speed force being immune to timeline changes, that could be true, if we want to just believe anything Eobard says. The negative speed force is the only place immune to timeline changes. But any speedster trying to avoid timeline changes would have to already be in the negative speed force before the changes took hold. If it worked just by having a connection to the negative speed force, then Nora shouldn't have had any issues with being erased last season, right? 
Plus, on top of all that, we can't forget the fact that literally all of reality got rewritten thanks to the Crisis crossover not too long ago. Even if Thawne originally needed Barry and the Speed Force to make sure he had his powers at one point in time, there's no guarantees he still needs them now. I mean, for all we know, merging all the different Earths and all the different Harrison Wells made Eobard a paradox yet again, freeing him and his Speed Force to do whatever they want moving forward. Crisis has the potential to be like Flashpoint times a million, and you can bet that whatever plot holes are still floating around about Thawne's powers by the end of the season, the writers are just going to sweep them all under that rug. Almost definitely. Either way, point is, Thawne's Speed Force is definitely independent of the OG version, and he definitely doesn't need Barry to keep his powers this time around. We'll probably get some confirmation of this as the show moves on, but honestly, with everything we've seen and heard up till this point, I don't even think we really need one. But I guess we'll see what happens when we start getting new episodes again. Either way guys, that's my take on how the negative Speed Force could still be a thing, even after the positive Speed Force died in Season 6 of The Flash. If you guys agreed with anything I said in this video, or if you have your own thoughts you want to throw out there, then go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then go ahead and click that like button, and if you're new, maybe consider clicking that subscribe button too. I've also got links to my Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Patreon in the description. You should probably check those out too. And if you want to see more of my content, then you can click the link to my last video. It's right there in the middle of your screen. Alright, and I will see you all next time.